Why, hello, hello, everybody. I'm Ani, creator and inventor of the Jewel Tool. And on today's show, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use a Fordham hammer handpiece. Um, we've done, I've done a live show on how to polish, put designs, modify like the anvil tips. Oh, Kristen, I forgot. Can I get a brand new anvil tip box? Basically, the, the these tips are interchangeable if you want. Oh, you're showing this. Oh, okay, cool. Interchangeable if you want. We put a little design here on this one and polished it that time. We also put another design on the round one because they make really nice, like, textured designs, if you guys didn't know that. And then we have a nice, cool square one here. Oh, thank you, Kristen. Am I missing some? I think I might be missing some. So basically, this is, oh, yeah, I got the sharp one. That sharp one's really cool. I wonder what happened to it. So that basically, you get all of these tips in this kit. Oh, yeah, my rocker. God, where's all my stuff? I don't know. It's somewhere floating around here. And it comes with a really nice little little case right here to mount them all, a little holding sand. Um, and so there's been a lot of questions on when to lubricate, should I lubricate, all of that. Well, you guys, I'm going to show you guys how to use it first and then I'll get into all the details and I just want you guys to know that I'm not really giving you guys the lubricating information it's not coming from my own experiences or I'm not just pulling things out of the sky I actually was communicating with the owner of Fordham Moments ago, I'll even show you our text messages. He's a very good friend of mine. And I wanted to make sure the information I was providing you guys was spot on. And um, because that's how I do things. I will show you a presentation on something from start to finish. This is a non-edited video. I want you guys to see the raw truth that's what we should call today the today's show the raw truth with ani and the hammer hand piece <laughs> so you guys um so i'm gonna get started i have a stone that i'm gonna hammer the side of the bezel and i'm going to um to show you the uh, how you attach it to your jewel tool so oh d say hi d i know d girl this one's for you um do you have any gravers you can sharpen also? I have some gravers. Yeah, we'll do some graver sharpening. Um, so let's get started. Oh, everyone is here. I see all your names. Hi, everybody. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, Bobby's listening from work. Okay, so it's going to be a, a good show. Hi, Melanie. I just sent you a message. Okay, so I'm going to just go over just the basics really quick. So, I have the flex shaft attached to the jewel tool right here. Okay, so and as you can see, the jewel tool is sitting horizontally. You guys see that? That means it's sitting on its side. It doesn't necessarily have to be sitting on the side to use your flex shaft. For example, you can definitely use your flex shaft. I haven't even cleaned from yesterday's show. Uh, yesterday, you guys, we did a beautiful agate. Um, I'll post the pictures of it. So you can put the jewel tool flex shaft when the jewel tool is standing up straight. So you can hold, use it this way or you can use it this way. You know, just for practical purposes, I just basically had it here so you guys can kind of see it. But yeah, so I already have it mounted with the handpiece. So also follow the... Follow, 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 follow the shaft. And if you have a jewel tool, you're a pull out because I'm going to show. Um, and you have, let's say, your handpiece already attached to your flex shaft. You guys, this is the handpiece that I manufacture that comes with your jewel tool. Now, to remove a handpiece, let me show you the proper way real quick before we get started because I don't want to get this question midway while I'm rolling, you know, in my zone. So, um, what you do is you just turn the jewel tool on slow. Look, just a basic, like a little, like that's it. Just a little until you hear something. 
just a little rotation of your motor running. Okay, you see that? Very, very slow. And so when you're gonna pull the hand piece out, you don't pull it from this flexible coil area. This is very, very delicate, you guys. You have to be very careful not to even bend this to uh, too tight of a degree. So basically, holding it downward, you can just pull right here, that area where there's like a little bit of a ball. You see that right there? You want to grip it with your left and just give yourself a good pull. You see that? And do, or if you're left handed, do vice versa. And do you guys see how the paddle is spinning? There's like this little flat little spot on it. Okay, I'm gonna actually stop it so you guys can see. So, you guys, you see how there's like a little paddle right there? I call it a paddle. People call it a flag. I'm trying to turn it, Yaro. It's not turning. There you go. So, you guys see how there's like a little flat little spot right there? Oh, it's a little oiled. Um, so, then to put the flex, the hand piece back on, this little paddle needs to connect with a little notch that's inside our flex shaft. You're too tight, Yara. Pull it back, yeah. Hand piece, so basically just like this. So when you just do it, you can't really get that paddle in. So that's why it's best to turn the jewel tool on just slightly, you see? So it eliminates the guessing game and as it rotates slow, that little, uh, paddle will find its little slit in the handpiece. And look, I just go like this, just lightly let it start. And then you can see, do you guys keep your eye right here? You guys see that? Like the second that the paddle found its little slot, it starts to go nice and spin, it's like spin, and then you just snap it right there. Do you guys see that? And so again, if you want to take it out while it's spinning, pull it off and it's still spinning. This is a great opportunity to put your hammer hand piece on. So I actually like to hold the coils from bending. Do you guys see that? And I'll just do like this right there and give it a little snap. And there you go. You see, you hear the soft pulses. So basically, so your jewel tool with the flex shaft is going to give you steady speeds. And Fordham says steady speeds is perfect for a, a handpiece and the speed of the jewel tool. You know, our speed goes up to 5,000 RPM and that's like the perfect operating speed for your handpiece. You don't want to go over 5,000 RPM. It's not good for your hammer handpiece. And when you're hammering, you want a stable pulse. So the 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 I want to say the jewel tool flex shaft is very similar to what you would get with like a micro motor. You know how you just set it, so it's not a like a flexible speed like with a, a foot pedal. So just know that you're gonna set it and forget it. Remember Ron Popeil with that? Set it and forget it. So you're gonna set your speed and then go to town. Forget about the speed. So. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, thank you, uh, Diane. Diane and Kat, they both said that they have the older round jewel tool, my older model. And then I love the comment where it said, I love that. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah, uh, old jewel tools better than no jewel tool. It's, and they run just, they keep going. You know, even Stellar has a lot of our round jewel tools in their factory. Isn't that crazy? So let's get started. So this is what I was talking about. This is really important to not bend this too much. It shouldn't go past like a, like it shouldn't hit 90 degree, even close to 90. I wouldn't even get it past this. So sometimes you guys, I'll, uh, you'll notice I'll, go like this a little. You guys see how it's kind of sitting on my shoulder? I know I look a little weird, but this way I can assure that this is not getting bent and anything, you know, because that could damage your handpiece. I just want you guys to know. They don't say that very often, but I know a few people that have bent this. You know, they worked on it, worked on it so much. As it's vibrating, it's, you know, as it's um, reciprocating, and this is bent. It's not good, you guys. Okay, so real quick, to answer the lubricating question. Oh! Everyone, drum roll, please. So D, 
I spoke to Rich and Rich said, after 10 hours of use, well, no, he didn't say continuous use. After 10 hours of use, your, uh, your hammer hand piece should be um, lubricated. And how you lubricate it is quite interesting. You don't have to remove anything. It's just lovely. There is a little hole. Where'd that hole? Right here. Do you guys see that? He's so cute. He even sent me pictures, you guys. Really sweet. So do you guys see there's a hole right there? Oh, let me do that. There you go. Do you see how there's like a little hole? Okay. So in this hole, there is the right here, you would drop some oil in there. And so they sell the oil. And if you guys, Fordham sells the oil. And then Rich said, um, Ani, I'll send you some. So if you need the oil, let me know. If you need the oil, let me know and I'll get it in. Um, I can get anything for them. So if you guys really need anything, just let me know. But we're going to be putting together, we're, ugh, it's a lot going on, but we will be putting together my favorite picks, my favorite Fordham picks on a separate web page on my jeweltool.com. Um, because I know a lot of people use uh, Fordham and I just love their products and I actually want to put up my favorites. So the hammer hand piece is one of my faves. Um, so he said that if you don't have his oil, you can use basic sewing machine oil and just drop it in there, a little dropper, a little needle point tip, you know, kind of little dropper right there and just get it in there. And that's, that's pretty much it. Look, so... What, Yara? You said something. Something coat? A paper clip, whatever it is. So, yep, he said, look. So, look, I just want you guys to see. Right here, it says, after every 10 hours of use, it should be lubricated. And then he sent me that only because he sent it to me earlier. This is how we communicate. I want you guys to know. You know, when you're in the tool business and, you know, you will have um, colleagues and you admire and respect each other, you become friends. And, you know, we, we, we've been, um, we travel to the same places. We end up eating and having dinner together. So, um, and then here, wait, well, before we start, let's just amuse ourselves. Watch this. This video came up while I was looking for a picture of him. Go ahead. Give me the question. Yes, it still has the hole. Yeah, so whether or not you guys so the question is if you don't if you do have if you don't have a hammer hand piece with this flexible coil, okay you guys, you would still lubricate it either way into that little hole. So yeah, that's a good question. What hole higher up, D? I don't have a hole higher up. What hole higher up? So no. Uh, yeah, so this hole, don't touch the, any other hole except for this. So the hole is right here, you guys. No, Yara, don't get zoomed in. I want them to see a full scope of where the hole. So where my finger, back up more, Yara. Back up, back up, back up. Okay, so right there. So the hole is in this area. The hole is not here. The hole is not here. It's not here. It's not here. It's right here on the shiny spot. Do you guys see that? Right kind of right below where it attaches to the flex shaft. The hole. The hole right here? That's the remove the bit. Yeah, that's I'm going to show how to do that in a second. Any other questions real quick before we get started? Yeah, in the black part. Okay, so we're good. Let's go. Okay, nothing. I want to show you a funny video. No, we're going to show a funny video. You guys got want to see this? So we're at the show, okay? We're at the jewelry show. And so I got off of my jewel tool station to go and talk to... Matt Durston, 
you know, from Durston Rolling Mills. He was right next to me. So I was bored and I said, let, let me chit chat with him because that's what I do. And then we glance over you guys and look what we see. You guys have to see this video. It's just hilarious. Ready? Look. Okay, so do you know who this is? That's Rich. That's the owner of Fordham. What is he working on, you guys? Is he working on a jewel tool? He is working on the jewel tool. So he is hilarious. So this is what we do. Okay, you guys, he was working on a, like a guitar pick. Was it a guitar pick? It was a guitar pick and it was like a stone, like a shell or something. And he was playing around with it forever with his flex shaft. And then when I got off the jewel tool, he just jumped on it and started playing and polishing. And we were like laughing so hard. So he had fun playing with the jewel tool. So you see how both tools are very, you know, complementary to each other and have different purposes and different uses. So that's what it is. So let's get. So what I have right now is I have the basic uh, head and we polished this already if you want to know how to polish these heads you guys see how it's it's shiny we polished it when you get it they're not polished like this um i have a whole video on how to do that you guys if you want a quick little run through of it i can show you but i did a whole video on that so let me go ahead and show you guys how I would use this hammer hand piece. So whether or not, whatever holder you have to hold the piece, whether you have a fancy GRS system, whether you have just like a wooded handle, whether you have just like this little twist thing that I have, pathetic little thing, I've never even used this. I usually use the wood one. This is the one I usually use. As you can see, I've used that in the past. This is mine, but I don't know why I mounted this. It looks nicer. You know, I was just on the phone with GRS last week with my friend Shane. I should have asked them for some of this stuff. What is wrong with me? But this is me. I don't ask for tools. I don't do that. So I'll probably end up buying one. Okay, so I'm going to run this. So you can run your flex shaft, your hammer hand piece at full speed. But honestly, you don't need to. You can run it about, I would say, like me medium. Medium, it's fine. It just depends on how hard the metal is. This is silver, so I really don't need to go heavy. And watch this, you guys. Let's go ahead and just hammer the side real quick. So it's really nice. You can see what you're doing. It doesn't bounce a lot. So you, I really don't ever cover my stone. But this is pretty much it. There. Oh, here. Okay, let me do it like this. Can you see it like this? Oh, wow. That's not the good spot. I'll, I'll hold it like this. I already did it. We'll just go over it. So it's really nice to have. If you have one of these, you you sure you love it. And that's that. Do you see how nice and clean of a hammer it gives? It's really, really fun to use. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, you can use the like so like let's say that you say well i don't always use my hammer hand piece to set bezels well it could be used for oh so many things you guys it doesn't and you don't have to get stuck with just using this you know to close up your bezels you guys definitely can use the tip this regular tip to put even designs on things look it will even change out the tip let me put something else on I'll put the square one on. Looks kind of cool. And to remove these, you guys, it's really simple. It's a screw. So it comes with a little pin right here. Look. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like a little pin right there. Um, my collection kind of went away. I don't know what happened to it. So I'm just going to grab the bird and kind of hold it. Okay, I'm improvising. Okay, you guys leave me alone. I'm a jeweler. We do these things. So I just go like this and just give it a nice little twist. There you go. You guys see? I know, wrong direction. So it's counterclockwise. And so basically, I'm just going to twist it out. You guys see that? It's just like a little thread. It's pretty nice. And then, oh, here, then you can, so here's a thread. Do you see that? And so basically you can put it in with your hand. There you go. And they do give you a wrench and all sorts of stuff, but 
to be honest with you, just a little tight little thing is good enough and I'm done. Tight thing, it's good enough. So now that I have a flat one and we polished it and created a really nice face to it, you can do cool things, you guys. Look, I was doing it earlier. And like, for example, if you wanna put like texture on things, check this out. Hold on. You guys, yeah, I'm holding it at an angle because I kind of want it to give me this really cool, like I, I want to say like almost like a diamond cut design. It can give you such pretty, oh wow, that came out really pretty, but it's so, hold on, let me show a few things real quick, you guys. I'm going to change up the angle, but it's so pretty. Hold on, let me show you. So I'm using the edge because I put such a pretty little edge on this. Hold on. And I'll show you guys in a second how it just keeps moving. Darn it. Stay in one spot, will ya? It's okay. Yeah, I will put it. Yeah, I can. But I just want to show you this. So check this out, you guys. Hold on. I'm going to go overhead camera. Yeah, is that good? Hold on. Where are we? So do you guys see how it's like a... It's like a crazy, I want to say, uh, texture. Do you see that? So that's just on the square. Look, you guys, this is just the square one that we polished and gave the edges a really nice, sharp finish. And we put like a little design on it. I remember what we did. We did something cool. So you can do cool stuff like this, create lines, create a cool little texture. So just so you guys know, it's not just limited to, you know, hammering. You can do all sorts of cool things. You can put, like, you can even do one little hammer design around it, like here. Like if we wanted to put a cool little design. Look, if I just wanted to put a cool design on the outside, look, I just have a regular blank right here, a shiny one that we polished. And like, let's say I just want to put it on the outside edge. You know, kind of put your own little design. I'm going to go into it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. It's such a pretty, like, gives such a nice texture. So each one really gives a nice texture it just depends you know what you want to do but they're really fun so you can get the hand piece with the anvil tips that's what i'm showing off do you guys see that right here hold on let me get my where are you do you guys see how i put this cool little texture it's really like it really is unique you can even go all the way to the edge i didn't even bother with that but there we'll dull out the whole edge so effortless, you guys, with such a really pretty, where are you? You to see that? You fill in whatever area. But I hope you guys can see how deep it is. They're really, like, really, like as if they were diamond cut, you know? Hold on. So there you go. Yeah, there. It's nice. Okay, so that's that what so that's that let me look at some quick questions before i move on okay we're already past the hole heidi heidi hi annie hi hi heidi i will send a pic later on jewel tool community d about here wait hold on wait a second d i got this this show is to answer the questions so look hold on one second I just got a message from Danny Wade. We're going to get him on our show. Who wants Danny Wade on our show? So excited. Thanks, Danny. I can't wait. Suni, you straightened your hair today? I went back to the curls. Look at me. I'm all like all over the place. Um, what was I going to say? Let me ask him. So, D, the question is, there's a second hole near the black. I, I, I got to answer this. This is how I do. I take care of my people. 
Okay. Hold on. I'm texting him. Is so is this the hole you're talking about, D? Right here? Right here? Well he can she can see it right here. Right here. Is that the hole you're talking about? Because I'm gonna ask him right now. Yep. So let me ask him. But this is not where you wanna this is not where you lubricate. So let's not talk about this hole. I'm not going to ask him. That's embarrassing. <laughs> He'll be like, Ani, are you not listening to me? I swear he will respond like that. So let me just, here, this is what I'm going to ask. Is there any other hole you can lubricate into? Is there any other hole that you put lubrication into? Question mark. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, no, D. He says this hole, only this. And he, here, look, he even sent me pictures. Look, let's show you his the pictures he sent me. So look, so do you guys see? He sent me these pictures. So right here, he said this hole. Where am I? Right there. Where is it? So he says this hole. You guys see that? So that's a picture he sent me. And then he also sent me this hole. Oh, wait, he did send me. No, there is an oil hole on the side. Oh, but he sent me this too. Uh oh, that's on the black. Oh, D, hold on. We gotta ask him. Okay, hold on, D. Maybe I misunderstood. Well, he wasn't clear. Do you oil the hole on the black part? Question mark. I'm a lazy typer. My hair is all over. Yara's telling me. Yeah, it's been a busy day. Okay, he better answer. I told, oh, he already responded. Just those two. Only one. Okay, so this is a thing. Ah, well, now he clear. Look, <laughs> he's such a brat. <laughs> okay, he says just those two, but there's only one on the H15 and there's two on the 15D. So the 15D is the one with the um, the coil. Yeah, the flexible. Okay. So there's two on the flexible coil. So there'd be one right here. Let's clarify this right here. And there's one here. You see that, Yarrow? So there's one on the black. So there's one right here. So there's the hole right here. Okay. And if you have one with the coil, you have to lubricate this area right here. Right here, this little hole. Okay. All right. And so the other hand piece without the coil only has one, which would be right here near the tip. Does that make sense? Okay. However, I told you guys we have a funny relationships. And you know what he said at the end? Don't you see the photo? <laughs> see the photo. Okay, there. All right. So I hope that answers that. You guys want me to ask him anything else while we have him on the line? I told him he should come live with us. Shouldn't he come live with us? They're all like embarrassed to be on camera. Okay. So I have the 15D. Thank you. My instructions have a typo. So I was, yes, I saw the instructions. D, you did the right thing. You posted the question. I saw that question. I got, I, Listen, you have a question, you ask me, I'll find out the answer. If I don't know, look, so this is, look what he said. He's such a butt. So, so funny. So he goes like this. I go, yes, I see the photo. And he sends me this little punk. Look at this. Look, I said, he says, yes, don't you see the photo? And he sends me this. <laughs> so you guys. Let's continue, shall we? Um, so, uh, so you, so the handpiece is bought separate, like you know, as one unit, and these anvil tips are purchased separately. These I actually have in stock. This is brand new. I have a brand new one too. This is one I use. So, if you guys are interested, know you know that 
you can get anything for them from our website. And if I don't have it up, that doesn't necessarily mean I don't have it in stock. It's just we haven't had time to put everything up on the website, you know. So just so you know, you guys, it, we we have an order coming in from them. So if you guys need anything to, for us to add, let me know. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. So there you go. So, yep, our uh, hammer hand piece up on the screen. I like, if you guys want my opinion, I like the hammer hand piece with the flexible coil. It really allows you to, you know, get in there. Like, it's very pen-like. Do you know what I mean? So I, I'm a little partial to the coiled one, the one that's flexible. Okay. And let's, let's go questions before. Tell them about the typo. Lo. I will. Oh, you have no idea, D. I'm going to say, well, the reason why we're all confused is because your manual has a bad typo and he'll be like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, so, okay, there you go. Oh, oh, look, Danny's calling. Let me answer real quick. Real quick, you guys. Hi, Danny. I'm in a live show. Can I call you back? But, but we all want you on our show, don't we, everybody? Yes, we do. We want Danny. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay, so as soon as I'm done, I'll call you back and let's schedule a time. Do you have time this week? Yeah, we're going to do it live. I want you to be on live with me. Okay, okay, okay. I'll call you back. Okay, bye, Danny. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, when I tell you guys things, I'm, I mean it. I say things that I mean. I mean what I say. I do what I say. I really am that person. <laughs> oh, oh, it's one of those days. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, what do you guys want to see? Do you, do you want to see me touch up an anvil tip? Do you want to see me finish how to clean this up? You guys have seen that a million times. What do you guys want to see? Yes to Danny, Karen. D says yes to Danny. I know he's such a sweetheart. I just want you guys to know, if you've never met Danny Wade, um, he is a very sweet, kind soul. Like, really. I, like, love him. He's He, he could... It, yeah, Yarrow says he's never seen him stressed. He's always cool. Like cool. He's got a lot of orders, but he's cool right now. He's like, but he'll, he'll get everyone out, everyone's orders out. Okay, sharp engravers. Okay, so look, I let me look for a graver. They, you know what? They cleaned up around here at that time, and before my gravers were like in my bench, and now they're somewhere there. If I find a graver, I'll do it real quick. So, one second, guys. Hold, hold on. Okay, sweet kid, incredibly talented, right, Linda? So talented, and not only that, he's a, so kind, you guys. You don't understand how sweet Danny is. Hold on, I'm looking for a graver. They cleaned up around here. Oh, here I have one. Anna Sally cleaned up. Let's get it. Let's get it straight. Not Kristen, and I knock things. Kristen goes. That's the one thing she doesn't do. <laughs> <laughs> so I found a graver. Um, so, but this graver already has a set angle. Now, so today's sharpening would be um, basically if you have a graver and you need to sharpen it, like hone it. Ho the word is called hone. The proper word is called hone. Basically, you have the angle. The angle is set. You're not changing the angle, but it's dulled out. So you need to sharpen it up and get that sharp tip back again. And that is what they call honing. So we will be honing this tip. However, I'm working on something, you guys. Working on something. Working on something. Yaro just gave me a mean thing saying, shut up. But I'm working on something. Not going to say anything just yet. I can't say anything. He wasn't mean. He just went like this to me. Like, <laughs> basically, shut up, honey. <laughs> when it's ready, well, when it's really close, I'm going to tell you guys. So let me get started here. All right. So listen, you guys, yesterday we ground that agate and you guys see this is from even last week. I didn't even clean anything up. But you guys, it's really important. I must stress 
to clean this out. So look, you guys, you can always take your vacuum out. Look, watch this. Switch cameras. Okay, so I pulled the vacuum. Look, so I pulled the vacuum out of uh, the little, uh, the nozzle out of the hole of the jewel tool. You guys see that? I pulled it out. So the port. Okay, so now, Yaro, can you see? Actually, let me do this so you can see. No, I'm going to do this so you guys can see. Let me remove you out of the way. Hold on. There you go. Okay, do you guys see? Do you guys see the dust? Okay, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and vacuum. That's the heavy stuff that didn't get into the vacuum. It just stayed stagnant there. Watch this. So vacuum's on, and you hold it at an angle. You never go flat down, because flat down will just suck. You hold it at an angle, and it'll grab everything. The, this is where you want to get the majority of the... Uh, the and this is how I clean my jewel tool, you guys. This is called the lazy person's way of cleaning. And you use the brush, but right now I'm enjoying the vacuum because it's super easy. And there you go. And you can use the brush. Where's my brush? Here's my brush. So a jeweler's brush is very good to use. Get clean up everything underneath that spindle. There you go. La, la, la. We're good to go, baby. Turn you off. Yeah, and so, oh, yeah, so make sure wherever you're snapping the hood that there's nothing, there's no debris or anything lodged inside these little slits. If not, the hood won't go back on nicely. And so now you take your vacuum and you plug it right back into the slot. There you go. And we're all set. Everyone's happy, happy. Oh, I got to put my lights on. Okay, so this is the graver you guys so the graver sharpening is going to be done with two things you can yeah oh god Yara, you scared me <laughs> i didn't know Yara was behind me so the graver can be sharpened you guys with your diamond wheels or your trizac wheels for example you guys see that so and right now you can tell that i've done this before do you guys see how polished the tip is? Hold on. Do you guys see how polished that is? So it's already sharp. I'm not going to lie. It's really sharp because I sharpened it. You guys see that? That's my nail. You know, you can do something. I don't have anything set up to show, but it's sharp. And I polished the sides to give it an extra bright cut. And I'll show you guys how I did that. So. Okay, they're here. Oh, that's a good question because I should update you guys on the vacuum status. Angelise. Okay, so the wait, one so we have this question about the vacuums. People keep asking this, so that's why I want to address it. Vacuums will hopefully be in uh when wait. A week from next Wednesday. Is that correct, Kristen? So about like, oh, yeah, two weeks. In two weeks, we'll have them back in stock. But last time we did this was early December when I I, I, I recommend that you go, you guys, it's UPS. Uh, I recommend that if I, are they available to purchase right now, Kristen? Okay, so I would highly recommend that you reserve yours now because I'm getting a good amount coming in. And already half of it is already spoken for, if not more. Right, Kristen? Yes. She's stressed. She went like this. Yes. <laughs> Chris. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, so, yeah, if you're wanting to get a vacuum, I would say get one, reserve yours now. That's all I have to say, you guys, because you're welcome and thank you, too. Okay, so... Um, Let's get started. So he, with the graver, you guys, it's really simple. So I've already, this angle has already been set. If you guys know me, I'm just going to touch it up lightly, you guys. You guys see that? I'm going to just touch it up lightly with the Trizac abrasive. So um, I would say 
to hone, depending on how dull it is, you have many different choices on your Trizac wheels. You have, I am right now, honey. I am. So you have the coarse, which is the green. You have the pink, which is the medium. I love the pink one. It's so pretty. You have the fine, which is the blue. And you have the very fine, which is the orange. So I wouldn't hone with the orange. It's not going to do much. It's a polish it. I mean, you can hone with the fine, but just to really get some action happening, let's use the medium. How about that? Okay. That'll grind some stuff down. And so when you start to sharpen, it's going to happen really, really quick and you need a light touch. So basically, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go up against the disc with the heel touching and then lift up against the wheel. What I mean by that is I'll show you. So this is the wheel we're going to go underneath. Okay, so look. I hope this is clear. Can you guys see that? So basic, where am I? Okay, so basically I'm going to touch, I'm going to make contact with the wheel like this. You guys see that? And then I'm gently going to lift up. You see that? So you start on the heel because the heel, it doesn't matter what happens to the heel. The heel doesn't do any of the cutting there. That's a better angle right there. Look, so you start up the heel and then you bevel up. So you're flat. Side view would be good. Thank you, Yarrow. So basically, I'm going to have the point in this direction pointing towards the arrow that's on your jewel tool in that direction or towards your vacuum hole. And so I'm going to start off on the heel. See that? And I'm going to bevel up. So I'm going to start off on the heel. So I know where I'm, like, I'm making footing and I bevel up. And then I drop it. So this is all I'm going to do while the disc is spinning. I'm going to just lightly touch it, bevel up flat, and drop it. Did you guys see that? Okay. So you go like this at the heel, bevel up, and drop it. So basically heel, toe, drop. Does that? And so when you do it, you never hold it like this. This is so wrong. Don't do this this. So what you need to do is grip the neck of the chicken and then support the neck with your index finger so you can move it and have stability so nothing bounces. Do you guys see how I'm holding it right here? So you don't do it like this. This is wrong. This is wrong. Absolutely wrong. Don't ever do this. You can hold it nicely. This way there will be no bounce, no chatter. You have control of the tool. This is proper. This is this is amateur. We're not amateurs here, you guys. We can do this. We got it. So heel, toe, drop. That's what I'm going to do. Beautiful. Okay. So basically, so since this is a four-inch wheel, I'm going to run it at medium speed. If you had a three-inch wheel on here, you would run it at high speed. Thank you very much. And let's go. So we've got medium. I put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing because that helps. Okay. So look. So we're going to do, you guys can see that. I'm right here. So you guys can see where I got the heel. You guys see that? And then I just bevel up there and drop it. That's how fast it should be done. Do you guys see that? No, I don't want to do it again. Why? What happened? Oh, Yara wants to do side. Okay, fine. For your side view, I'll do it again. But just real quick, do you guys see how quickly that sharpened that tip? It's a flat disc, so it's going to get nice and flat. So go ahead and darken it again. And I will just hold it right here. You guys see that heel? I'll do it slow. And when you're flat, you just hold it there, kind of zhuzh it, and then drop it. And that's it. You guys see? Heel, toe, drop. So one thing you have to know, you guys, 
when it comes to the Trizac, Trizac, and if you have Trizac, you know this, Trizac really doesn't leave like a burr. So like if you guys saw how sharp this is, it's it's extremely sharp, you guys. So, but do I want it, do I want to stop it at this sharpness? No, I want to go ahead and give it a polished look. See, it's not polished at the tip anymore. It's nice and flat. Damn, that looks so good. See how flat that is? So it's still very sharp. Okay, so I'm going to sharpen it and what? Yeah, so what I'm going to do, you guys, I'm going to go to the next step. I'm going to use the fine and the very fine for a high polish. Yeah. Quiet on the set, people. My son and daughter are having a little squabble. A what? A tiff? What? A tiff is what Kristen calls it. This My tiff is I take something and go, shut up. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. So this black holder, you guys, is, um, I used to sell these. You guys like these? So these are, they just basically, you unscrew it right here, you guys. Look. And it's like a vice. So this opens and closes. You guys see right here? Just opens, the mouth opens. Hold on. There it is. Like, and then it goes back here. Let me do this. You see how it opens? And then so when you want it tight, you just tighten well, you hold this and you just tighten. There you go. It's pretty cool. I mean, listen, this is holding your ring. It does the same job. I'm sorry, GRS, but it does. You know, for you, for all my diamond setting, you know, if I didn't put it on shellac, I would use this. Where's my little, see here. Oh, I said shellac. I said shellac and shellac appeared. Yeah, so if I didn't use it on here to do diamond setting, you know, heat it up and put something in and start drilling away, I would use this. I would use this one. As you can see, I've used it. And so you would also, these are really inexpensive and they're very, they still, they they work, you know, you guys. And so what you do is you put in a little, like it comes with a, a little shim. I don't have one because I lost it. I don't know what happened to it, but basically it's his concept. Okay. Sorry. That's a tongue of a thing, but it holds it in place. And believe it or not, you guys, some of the best diamond setters in the world I've witnessed use this. Yes. I know the GRS system is amazing and they use that too. But back when they didn't have the GRS system, it's not like no one could diamond set the saying they were doing exceptional work on stuff like this i know what you're talking about jennifer oh funny we were just giggling about this yesterday oh Okay, if you guys like this ring holder, I don't know. I, I used to sell it. It's one of the ones that we used to sell. Okay, Jennifer, I'll get back to you guys on that. And 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 sorry, got kind of confused. And I'll get back to you on the ring holder. Okay, just hang in there. I don't want to say anything random. <gasps> yes, Nicole just popped in and Nicole goes, I have no idea what you're doing. I don't even know which wheel you're using. But she goes, that sounds like the Trizac wheel you're using because that's the only one that'll give that crispy, crisp edge. You know, it's true. Actually, we use the medium and I'm going to use the fine to get, you guys see how flat that is? Ugh, like really people. Yeah, so I'm going to use the fine. So basically what I want to do is get a really crispy, crisp, flat polish. And really, you guys can achieve that with the Trizac. So darkening it again. Exactly, right? Right, Nicole? Right, Jennifer? Okay, so running this at medium speed because it's a 4-inch. Okay, we're ready. We're ready, set, go. So you just do remember the dance. And look, you guys. To keep my hand even more stable, look what I've done with my pinky. Take a little look, see. Do you see this little? Do you see this little pinky? So instead of standing here mid-air where I'm not stable, I take my pinky and I put it right here. 
You guys see that right there? So now I'm real, like I have my own set. So I just start off with the heel. See where I made contact? And then you just hold it there and you get a nice polish and drop it. And already, damn, Gina, this is good. Already, you get that polished. You guys see how polished that edge is? Right there. Okay? So you get that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one more and I'm going to use the very fine. Okay, you can stop here, you guys. This is polished, but if you really want to go for it, let me show you. And I'm going to do the sides too on this one. So let's go. So let's go ahead and run this at medium speed. Again, in position. And you'll see the polish come up, baby. Do you guys see that polish come up? Do you guys see that polish just pop? Like, that's not funny, you guys. It's a polish. Okay, so now this is when I'll touch the sides a little. So, you guys, so to do the sides, before I start, I'm going to show you guys what I'm about to do. So, again, I have my pinky here. I'm going to go nose down and gently lift up. Do you see that? And when I'm there, when I'm done, I drop it. So, nose down, up drop but at the same time everything is still pointed in the direction of the arrow on your jewel tool the arrow on your jewel tool is this one that i'm talking about everyone has this on their jewel tool okay even if you have the round one it still has an arrow and tells you so either way so this tip should always be pointing towards that arrow. Do you see? And if you forget about this arrow, just remember it should be pointing towards the hole for your vacuum. There you go. Okay, so now we have the very fine orange Trizac. Oh, and another side note. If you guys have Trizac and you see a little seam going down it, do you guys see that? This is normal production of the Trizac. Okay, it doesn't affect any of the performance at all you guys if it did guess what 3m would not be liable and send this out i've spoken to them a gazillion times back when i started and this is completely okay so if you get a trizac and it has a seam in it not all of them have it it just depends on what you know what one you got this is okay this is okay people you see that how there's like a seam it, you can't even feel it it's all so god they're good um yeah so there okay so next so we're gonna do the side remember down up drop down heel toe drop there you go so running this at medium speed okay so now i'm gonna support it with my index finger and you you can use like a a finger if you guys don't want to use your own fingertip you can put like a like a vet wrap on Okay, there you go. And so you just hold it right here. So nose down. So we're going to hit over here primarily. And we're going to kind of work our way to the tip. You guys see that? And before you know it, we're done. Oh, yeah. And we're done. Drop it. You guys see how I'm already polished at that level? Do you guys see that? We got rid of the black. And so there. So let me go ahead and darken it a little bit more so you guys can see how I get up there. You see that? Okay. So we're going to do this again. So remember, you guys, to keep this down and just kind of hold it there. You guys see that? And then before you know it, you're already done and you just drop it. End of story. Very nice. You can even touch the back just a little for good measure. But other than that, we're good. So do you guys see how polished? So now this sucker is so sharp. That's how sharp it is, you guys. Can you do that with, can you see that with the far cam? Oh. Oh. Well, I had to see, it's so tiny. So just, oh, so you guys see how it's like caught on my nail? That's called extreme sharpness. You see that? It's not sliding. It's an old way, old fashioned way of testing the tip call it whatever you want, but I'm going to polish it with the felt wheel. So hang on guys. So just so you guys know, it's very sharp. 
You don't have to use the felt wheel, but the felt wheel will give you an extra bright cut. So basically what I mean is, let's say you're engraving something, okay? And as you engrave, you want wherever the the graver went through to leave a bright finish. So when it's polished, it leaves a bright cut, like it's already polished. So that's why people want to get to the stage of a polish on their gravers. And that's what makes it really professional. But honest to God, like this is one of the um, shellac little holders that I would do. So basically with a torch, you would warm this up and it becomes extremely sticky, like we like shellac sticky. And you would put the piece, like if I was doing pave setting or anything like that, I would use this. You know, now that again, now GRS has some fancy things to hold things. Back in my day, we didn't. This is what we did. And it worked just fine, just saying. Oh, yeah, you hate the, the nail thing. I know. The nail thing is just so in my DNA. It's not even funny. We checked everything. If it was sharp, off your nail. I know. Um, there is something just so incredibly luscious and professional about those tri that Trizac finish. I'm telling you, the David Yerman people love that Trizac finish. They love that crisp. If you guys look at all the men's collection, it's all so geometric. You know, and they don't have any other tool to do it except the jewel tool. And it's funny because I spoke to a lot of their factory workers and they were doing it by hand. And even though we had a language barrier, they would say, even with hand, it's very hard to do with hand. Even with hand, I can't do it. It's like not as accurate as they want. So they really like my tool. D Marie, anytime. Stop the nail thing. I cringe. I know. Okay, I won't do that anymore. Okay, so now. We're going to polish it with the felt. And this is something you need to understand. Listen to what I say because the felt is soft. The felt can get cut up. You can put a mark in it. So you got to keep it as flat as possible with the felt. If you slightly dig into your felt, guess what you're going to do? You're going to put a groove into your felt. And you don't want to do that. Then you got to sand it and get it smooth again. So the second that you make flat contact, you're done. Don't get crazy and go like this. You remember working flat. So you, as soon as you bring it up, you stop. Don't go like this. Do not bring that hand down. And I will show it to you. Okay. So we have the felt wheel. The felt wheel flat. We need flat surface. So again, you guys, the second that you make contact with it flat, you stop. You don't lift it like this. So the second that you make contact, you stop and then drop it. So again, I'll say this again, the second that you make contact, you stop, okay? That's it, you don't go like this. You do this, you're gonna create a, 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 a little ring around, your, <laughs> ring around your felt. So here we go, okay? Stop and drop, do not roll, I repeat, no roll in here. So there we go. And we can touch up the tip a little, it really doesn't need it, but I'll just do the sides, really, honestly. Okay, so we're just going to do the sides because the sides do the bright cutting. So again, you guys, give a good stable position right here. Hold it there, lift it up, and drop. Same scenario on the other side. Hold it there. See how I start at the angle? Okay, uh -huh. and then you lift it up. As soon as you feel that you know, you're flat and you can see it, you drop it. Don't go like this. You go like this, physics is going to take over and it's going to slice your, uh, your um, felt. Okay, so let's get started. So let's go ahead and put some compound on this bad boy. There you go. And so, so here we go, you guys. So you start off nose down. Ready? Nose down, gradual, gradual. Don't put pressure too, just a light touch. You just want a light little polish. Do you see that? It'll polish up really, really quick already. Already. Okay, now we flip it around. Okay. Okay, it's kind of hard, Yarl, but okay. Okay, right there, okay. So there we go. So hold it there, and then as soon as you're there, just lift it up just lightly and then drop it. You can even do the back side of it a little. Give that extra polish. Other than that, you're good to go. Look. 
do not slide off the wheel so we have a really pretty polish you see how nice and flat that is right there see and we polished even here and we polish this side right there do you see that and then we have this so you could touch up this but really honest to god it's really unnecessary to touch this up hold on let me get the compound off i still want to leave it nice and crisp and you guys you don't understand oh wait ow that was sharp <laughs> okay <laughs> okie dokie so here if you don't want to see that i'll do it on metal here this is a piece of metal there you see how it just caught it and i can even bring up a bead wow that's so sharp do you guys see how i'm bringing up a bead I know I don't want to put my hand there, but it's hard. This is not how you should be doing this. But I'll show you overhead of how I brought up a bead. And when you get the bead, just give it a nice little um, dig. You kind of grow and then get create a bead. So this is kind of like how you kind of create a bead, they call it. So do you guys see how the surface of this wasn't even polished? But wherever I'm using the graver, it's shiny. Do you see that? So there, yeah. I can't. I'll just do it midair. That's so sharp, I can't even do it midair. It's okay, my hand isn't there. Just create a bead. Do you guys see that? Even midair. So yeah, nice and sharp, but what's nice is look at the polish, you guys. So I didn't compromise the original like angle, the degree. And so if you have carbide gravers, you guys, you'd have to use the diamond. You'd have to use the diamond wheels. So I would say, you know, you're good enough with ending with a very fine. It'll give you a really, really fine polish you guys you have no idea how nice they polish and there you go i wasn't expecting to do a graver but you ask ani delivered pretty cool huh okay so that's that what else we got you good i'm glad you guys are talking between yourselves if you guys have any other questions let me know if not i'm gonna call danny wade after i'm done i'll keep you guys posted and I'm working on something with Francesca next week, you guys. Stay tuned. I'm not going to tell you what it is. A lot of exciting, cool things happening. We're ha we said, you know what? For 2021, we're just going to just do it. You know what? We're just going to keep blowing it out of the park with such cool things. So I have more um, cool people on. Uh, I'm going to get on my show. And what else? You, okay, so first of all, Heidi, you don't need to, and, and so this part right here, do you see this part? This part, you guys, is where we grind, okay? So this does not need to be polished. This is not doing any of the work, huh? Oh, an item, oh, well, well hell, who says this, Anne? And I've done this a gazillion times on like a lot of videos, but I'll show it to you because you asked. And I'm here, and so why not? Okay, so let's, she's, oh, then I'll show you. But I show this a lot. I show all those techniques a lot, just so you know, Anne. But let me show you real quick, you guys. Let's show Anne how to feather. It's called a feathering technique. So like, let's say if we have, like, like you said, that, that groove. I don't want to do that engraver because I have to fix it. It's not very smooth. Hold on. I'll find you something. Give me a second. Let me find something with. The what? Yeah, you can also use any of our felt run true. But hold on. Let me find something. I had something in mind, but of course. where? Oh, here. This is a good one. Here. How's this? Does this make you happy, Anne? Anne. Hello. Okay, so you can polish this, you guys, or you can even use your scratch eraser to do it. 
Do you want to take a before picture? Okay. Yarrow now says, that'll be a nice before and after picture. Go for it, Yarrow. We are waiting for Francesca to send you the project to finish working before Christmas. Oh, I mean, I should remind Francesca about that. Oh, we have so many. Oh, we've got some. We've got something for you guys. Just so you, I can't say anything. I get in trouble. Story of my life. I can't say. Yara says there's a lot of things I can't say. But sooner or later, I'll say them. Okay, so hang on. So I'm going to show you how to use the scratch eraser first, and then I'm going to use the felt wheel. So hang in there. Oh, Mary keeps saying, oh, Mary. Hi, Mary. Mary asked about the gem show in Tucson. Oh, so Mary, the, the Be True, True Blue show, the one that was at the casino, has been postponed till 2000, like, it won't happen this, like, year. It's like 2022, and then they're going to do a winter workshop. So I don't know what that's about. But all the other Tucson shows have been postponed to April. Some canceled. But my thing about the Tucson show, you guys, is it's going to deter a lot of vendors. Because the vendors are going to feel as though, first of all, some vendors are like not comfortable going. They're going to be seeing a lot of people that they don't want to see. But they also are concerned about the turnout because there's a lot of people that don't want to travel, don't trust being around people. And that's the, that's like with the tippy toe action, the little dance that's happening right now, you guys. I'm listening to the promoters, actually speaking to one, and they just don't know. They're just waiting to hear what happens for the Tucson show. So stay tuned, Mary. Okay, future show, a nice chamfer on a ring. Uh, oh, D, D, I can do a nice chamfer on the ring. Oh, we can do lots of chamfers on the ring. Perfect. Okay, beautiful. So here we have a really nasty ring. <laughs> like it doesn't get worse than this. So here we go. You guys see this? So I'm using the very fine scratch eraser. And so... Just so, this is how you do it. You hold it at the edge and you rock it. This is all you do. And if you have a pit right there, hold it a little longer and I'll get rid of the pit for you. And you guys see that? Like, honest to God. I mean, how easy is that? And it's a curve. So you just can keep going. And there you go. You see how beautifully finished that is without removing metal. And you can flip it around if you miss the spot. Run it one more shot right here. It doesn't matter because it doesn't grind like a like sandpaper. It's just so lovely. I mean, if you don't have this wheel, whoo, you're missing out. So from this to this in seconds. And you can do the sides. Look at that. Woo! Oh, yeah. Talk about professional finish. Look at that, you guys. Like, look at how the light just follows. Do that, and then we'll polish. Oh, we got some teeth marks there. See? I'll smooth off all those teeth marks. And then, uh, now you know why people say, I love my jewel tool. Well, guess why? Because it's so fun to use. Okay, so that was the scratch eraser in very fine you see that okay cool so now i'm gonna take my felt wheel here it is felt wheel no this actually was going to be made into a spinner ring so this was designed this is going to be a spinner ring um we someone was making this as a project no, it's a ring. So trust and believe. It's a size 10. Yeah. Oh, dear Lord. It's big. It's size 14. Yeah. Um, but you know what happens when you bend it on a ring bender? Uh, oh. What happens when you do it on a ring bender and want the sides to be lifted? I should show you that technique. I have a Durston ring um, stretcher and a 
bender here. <gasps> I should show you guys that technique. It'll actually get smaller in size. And that's how you can make a band either larger or smaller. I should show you that. Remind me to show you guys that. I have that. I have that. Okay. So, so here is, so this is what we have. Okay. Where are we? Okay. And this right here. Felt wheel. So just within seconds, you'll get that nice little polish. So this is what you do. You rock it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's the finish you get, you guys. Look at that polish. Uh-huh. And so, look, it's blurry. Okay, I'll do it again. Okay, so here we go. Here, let me do it again. There. Is that better? There you go. And there you go. The beautiful polish from that to this. And you can do the sides. Oh, yes, baby. Ooh, ooh. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, honest to God, this, your pieces will go from like nothing spectacular to wowza gazauza. You know what I mean, guys? So hold on. Let me get, get rid of some of the compound. And you can use your magic buff oh here let me say this you guys if you have the pink magic buff and i know a lot of you guys have gotten them um when you put it on you guys it kind of has a little bit of a wiggle do you guys see that hold on let me move this just a little you see how it has a little bit of a wiggle okay so the camera is still moving okay so it has a little bit of a wiggle okay so what i want you guys to do to make sure it's not on crooked the way it's on kind of nice and even, I want you to not spin it with your palm. I want you just to kind of hold it stable, flat, and with your other hand, move the spindle. So tighten it with the spindle. You guys see that? You spin it to the left. So you tightened it there. So this way, if I use my palm, I would probably put more pressure here, more pressure there, and I would spin it on crooked. So but this will sure, look, I'm going to run it slow. You guys see how it's running even? So if you're, if you have, if you have some pieces flying off your pink buff, if there's a lot of, after first initial use, first initial use, you're going to have some fabrics kind of spraying a little off just until the fibers, you know, start to polish. But if it's happening like over and over and over again, that means you guys, your um, magic buff is being put on crooked. So instead of it being even, it's like this. You want to be like this. You don't want to be like this. No one wants to walk around like this. You know, you just want to be straight. So it's straight. So let me go ahead and use this. So this is the magic buff. I run this at about medium slow speed. You don't need uh, high speeds for this. Okay. Just make sure you got any kind of compound off. And so you just hold it there. Look, you guys, what's nice is it doesn't want to grab. Oh, Yara, what are you hitting the table for? So you guys see, I kind of like use the edge. It's so nice. Look at that. Woo! Wow. Can they I'm just going to hit it again because it just looks so good. Like the second... Like, I don't know. Can you guys see that? Like, that is, that is good. From drab to fabulous. So remember we were here. And look at this gorgeousness. Like, look, you see how the light follows? There's not an uneven, there's no sandpaper lines. There's no nothing. Gorgeous, gorgeous, baby. And if you want, I think I, I think while polishing, I already polished the sides because those are nice and polished too. So we did, we killed two things with one stone. And there you go. And that's it. So, wow, this show did turned out to be a totally different show than I started with. And I hope this helped you guys out. Any other things? And in seconds, ta da! Ta da! Oh, I got HBO. I'm going to watch Wonder Woman, you guys. Dun, 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 dun.
Ach, ach. I gotta put my cuffs on. No I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, from Jab to Fab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Isn't it Elvis's birthday like last week or something? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, great. You're welcome. And anything. So you guys know that if I'm on the show and you guys have a specific question, I will get to it. You know, or if I say I'm gonna get a show, I'll get to the show. I promise I'll get to it. I just got a lot of work. So. Here we go. Well, I'd love to see that DNA. Okay, so yeah, I'll do that. I'll pull out my Durston ring stretcher and ring shrinker, and I'll show you guys how you do that. It's really easy. I don't know. Did you guys not know that? Hmm. I should really share some of your guys, some of my jewelers' techniques with you guys. Um, what else we got? Uh, update flappers. People who've been waiting for the flappers. Flapper update. The flappers will ship hopefully friday but for sure monday there you go because they're they're in transit we're waiting for them we're waiting for them so yeah then text me about how you feel about citrine after oh oh you want me to give my thoughts on i love citrine i have a whole bunch of citrine you guys want to see this look at my citrine i have i have all sorts of citrine here I had gotten a lot of this stuff. I love citrine. It's so pretty. Yarrow can't show you. Yeah, maybe I'll grind one of these. This one's a real pretty one too. Yeah, I love citrine. That's uh, you can't tell Yara. The color is so. Um, yeah, there you go. No, it's fine. It's fine. They get the idea. Oh, you can see it better here. Yeah. So there. Anyways, that's that. The Bee Gees documentary, you guys, I'm a huge Bee Gees fan. I even had a pink shirt with the Bee Gees all on it. You know? What is that song? Oh, Kristen, your mom loves the Bee Gees? Oh, more than a woman. More than a woman to me. -da 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 -da. More than a woman. Woo! I love that song. I can't wait. I'm gonna like so look for it. Yeah, I got excited. Love Bee Gees. Andy Gibb. Ooh! Okay. My husband makes rings out of silver half dollars. He turns coins inside out. It's cool. Yes, Melanie. Melanie, I actually have that coin. Uh, Melanie, you should tell him. Wait, Melanie. Wait, please. Hold, please. I'll do a Francesca. Hold on. Wait. Wait, I swear it's here somewhere. Hold on. I'll look for it on air. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, so I know what you're talking about, Melanie. So remember how I told you I'm always at the Rio Grande booth? So they started to do this. So this is the, this will turn into a ring, but this was a coin to start off with. So they sell a little coin ring maker. See, it says Regency, it says something currency so wait hold on it says currency here see how it says currency so this was a coin and so if you keep bending it it'll become a ring and i could do this too on the durston just pop it pop it pop it so but one thing you should tell your husband to use the scratch erasers to make it super even because after all that <laughs> bending Things that are not as crispy, crisp on the coin. And what I mean is this. Look. Look, 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 look. Where is it? Here, I'll just grab the... I'll just do the very fine. It's fine. So look. So you do this. And you can totally bring up the original. Do you see that? The original. Without compromising the details but it makes everything crisp and flat again. Same here. So you see how rough this is? I might need the fine for this, but. Oh, sorry, Yarrow, no. Yarrow goes, do you have a before picture? No, I don't. Oh yeah, this, see it's how rough? You just hold it there and it gets everything like super perfect. Woo! There you go. Look at that. 
I know, why is it not focusy? Where's that top part I did? Somewhere here. There it is. So yeah, you see, you can get all sorts of perfection. You see from, because you see how uneven it gets. It's like really uneven. And then you can just, wow, wow, it's a gazelle, look at that. Just give it a little zhuzh and you're done. So yeah. All right, what else you got at me? Go ahead, keep throwing those ba baseballs at me. I'll just keep going. And next, Whoosh. okay, got one, knocked out of the park. What else we got? Whoosh. Yeah, the coin ring making is fun. Yeah, Melanie, you can do it for him. Okay, you guys. Oh, the citrine after you see Wonder Woman. Aha, made the connection. Took a minute, Nicole, but I got it. There's something about the citrine in the movie on HBO about Wonder Woman in there. So I got gotcha. you. It made the connection. Durr. Okay, so now you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening. I had fun. I'm glad I was able to help answer the questions on the hammer hand piece. But remember, if you guys need anything for them, just let me know. As you know, I know who to call. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no but for in all honesty, one thing too is I'm really familiar with the Fordham um I've grew up with a Fordham in my hand. How about that? I'm very familiar with their products. So, you know, it's one thing, you know, you're asking someone else, but I really can even help you as far as support goes. So um, that's why he, he likes when I do demonstrations for his products because he knows I'll help you guys out. One less thing for him to do. <laughs> so yeah, um, and that's that. So we have the hammer hand piece in stock. We have the anvil tips in stock and I'll be putting some more Fordham stuff up if you guys need any just let me know um, and that'll be it for today you guys um, I will see you guys tomorrow let me find out what's happening maybe I'll get Danny Wade on tomorrow or Friday but I'll post and I'll let you know what's happening so thank you again for a wonderful time with you guys I really enjoyed it and I'm grateful for you all as always duh um Last question, Teresa Sarnas. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Teresa, listen, I'm so glad you sent the last comment because this has been calling your name. Don't think I forgot about this. It's sitting right here on my bench. I'm going to do a special day and I'm going to let you know ahead of time when I'm doing this stone because this is your stone, my girlfriend. Okay? Didn't forget. I doesn't do that kind of stuff. She remembers a lot. So it's a curse and a blessing at the same time. But Teresa, I got you and we're going to work on this. I just want to let you know ahead of time when I'm going to do it. Don't want to spring it on you. So yeah, that's good. All right. Yeah, maybe we can even get you live. If you go, uh, Yaro's been able to do that, you guys. Well, oh, that's not a bad idea. Maybe we can do a split screen with you, it's Teresa. We'll see. Let's see what we got going on. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. I love you. Okay. Bye for now. See you guys tomorrow. Big kisses. Love you guys. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.